Hey guys, new year, new me, and the best part of all, new camera. All right guys, so the main features or the main reasons that me coming from an EOS RP to upgrade to the R6 was 4K 60 frames a second with dual pixel autofocus. It really killed me that not having the dual pixel autofocus in 4K. And one of the reasons that I really wanted 4K was because my drone, the uh, DJI Mavic 2 Pro, that's recording in 4K in C-Log. And I felt like I always kind of had to do timelines in 1080p and I wanted to have a camera that allowed me to really utilize dual pixel autofocus in 4K. Um, another big feature or another big reason that I got it was being able to shoot at 120 frames a second in 1080p. Um, where this one would only do it in 720p. So that was a big one. And also, again, having dual pixel autofocus enabled during the ability to shoot at 120 frames a second. So those two things alone were kind of enough reason for me to upgrade. But what I didn't expect was how much faster the dual pixel autofocus 2 system was going to be over the dual pixel autofocus 1 system. Now, this Tamron 100 to 400 millimeter lens I've always loved this lens. I've gotten great shots with it with the RP. I'm not saying that you can't, but the dual pixel autofocus 2 system, I've got to say it probably tripled the speed that I can lock onto birds or anything like that. And that's not even mentioning the fact that I've got now got, you know, animal tracking priority, which isn't perfect. A lot of the reviewers that I watched, they made it seem like you just press that button and it, it works a lot of the times. And a lot of the times it doesn't, but it's not perfect. Canon's doing a really good job. It's awesome, but it's not perfect. Um, other things that I really love about this camera or reasons that I got it was C-Log. Now, I downloaded a C-Log profile that I put into my RP. It works pretty good. It's not even close to the 10-bit C-Log that I'm getting with this versus the 8-bit C-Log, fake C-Log that I'm using with my RP. So, just putting all those things together, better autofocus, um, oh, I forgot to mention, in-body stabilization, which works really well. It's linked right into the stability systems that are on your lenses, so because I had an RP, pretty much all the lenses I have have stabilization in them. So when you use a lens with stabilization, the in-body stabilization is linked right to that. And what I mean by that is you can't run it at different levels. If you turn the stabilization on in the lens, then the in-body stabilization is on. If you turn it off on the lens, then the in-body stabilization is off. And that's something that I didn't expect. I kind of expected to be able to turn that on and then be able to turn on the next level of stabilization with the lens and have them work separately, but that's not how it works. It's linked right to the stabilization in the lens. Now, if you do use a lens that doesn't have stabilization, then in the menu you get an option where you can turn on or turn off the in-body stabilization. So that's how that works. I'm fine with that. It's a little weird, but it works really well. I mean, the difference between just lens st stabilization and having the in-body and the lens stabilization working in tandem is magnificent. It works really, really great. Um, if you can't tell, I'm really happy with this camera. I love this camera. I'm really glad that I got it. Um, in regards to overheating, it does happen. I definitely hit the limit one time. Um, that being said, I was shooting wildlife and I was probably recording for way longer than I really needed to be, but sometimes I like to just be able to set my frame, record, and then let the action happen because, you know, for instance, one of these really stellar shots that I got with the hawks coming in, it was, um, it was awesome to have that running and that's where I ended up running into those overheating issues were running really long clips like 10 minutes 15 minutes of just straight recording 4k 60 frames c-log 10-bit 
and it just kept chiseling away at my 30 minutes until I did eventually hit that overheating process and it shut my camera down. Um, but like I said, that being said, I was probably shooting for longer than I needed to. I just kind of wanted to see what really did happen. And this is in New Jersey in the winter where it's chilly out right now. So it's not even like I've gotten to test this camera in, you know, 100 degrees like Jersey summers get. So that's going to be interesting to see how much the ambient temperature affects it. Um, but that being said, I don't think that for any reason that this is unusable for my uses as far as shooting B-roll or doing even stuff like this, um, it's going to be fine. I'm not going to ever really, you know, I'm not shooting full movies. I'm just doing my YouTube and doing my wildlife stuff. But it is something that's there. It does happen. Okay, so I talked a lot about all the great things about this camera. What's some of the bad things about this camera? I'll tell you one thing real quick that sucks about it is the heaviness of the codec that it's using for the video. So I've got a pretty powerful com computer. I've got a liquid-cooled i7, you know, overclocked 4.7, um, hyper-threaded and all that, um, 32 gigs of RAM, GTX 1080. Can't even come close to uh, scrubbing the video in Premiere Pro. So that was something that was kind of a huge bummer, is it a lot of time added to the workflow of the files here because I have to work with proxies. And that's something that I never really wanted to work with. I always built strong computers to try to overcome having to use proxies, but well, if you're gonna buy an R6, get used to it because that's what you're gonna have to do. It's not a big deal. You basically just right click and tell it to create proxies, but then you get to wait, you know, an hour, two hours for everything to be generated, even if you have a powerful computer. So get ready for super heavy codecs that are hard to work with. That's probably the biggest complaint that I have about using the R6. Everything else, pretty much loving it. And how's the in-body stabilization? So this is the 35 millimeter RF Canon lens. So we've got eight stops of stabilization claimed. I mean, it is good. I'm not gonna lie, it's good, it's not perfect. But it's good. This doesn't have any of the digital stabilization either. This is just in-body stabilization and lens stabilization, which again, you can't separate. So, there is more stabilization, but it'll crop in even more. And I'm usually using 24 mils, not 35 mils when I try to do vlog stuff. So let me know, Let's, we'll see how it looks when I get it back on the computer. So another thing that's definitely worth mentioning is how quiet this thing is when you shoot. So you have two choices with this one. You can shoot in electronic or you can shoot in mechanical shutter mode. Now, mechanical shutter mode allows 12 frames per second. Now, listen to this, ready, here we go. That's as loud as it's gonna be, that's mechanical. Now, if I switch this over to the electronic, now you're dead silent. Here we go, I'm gonna fire it off. It's shooting right now. You don't even know it because it's silent and it's crazy. You got now have 20 frames per second. Now, there's problems that are introduced when it comes to using the electronic shutter mode. Like you're gonna get some rolling shutter issues, things that move really quickly, like a football that's flying through the air or wings flapping from a hummingbird. Things that are super fast like that, you're gonna get weird curvature to the picture. So it's not something that you can use all the time, but I took pictures of eagles and stuff like that flying, no problems at all with anything. So I, it's just things that are really, really fast that you're going to introduce like rolling shutter issues and stuff like that. But how quiet this thing shoots is amazing. I mean, you can literally be right in on your wildlife, taking shots. Like I said, if you're using the electronic shutter mode, dead silent, dead silent. You don't even really, it's weird, really. You don't even realize you're taking pictures. I've almost like questioned myself, like I'm pressing the button and it doesn't feel like anything's happening. That's how quiet it is. It's amazing. So just to conclude everything from this video, I love this camera. If you have an RP like I did and you're thinking about upgrading, totally, totally worth it. You're gonna be super happy. Overheating, it does happen. I don't know how bad it's gonna be when it's really, really hot out. I don't think, Unless you're like gonna be shooting crazy long, you know, movies or something like that, it's ever gonna bother anybody that's gonna buy this camera. And again, there's solutions to that too. You can buy an external recorder like the Ninja 5, and then that's supposed to like double or triple the amount of time. So if you did have to do something serious, you could, there are solutions there for you. So 
Um, one other thing that I probably should mention is the 20 megapixel sensor. Something I was worried about, right? I went from M50 24 megapixels to RP 26 megapixels to R6, which is 20 megapixels. I was worried about not being able to crop or, you know, really degrading the resolution so much because I do like to crop with my wildlife um, sometimes. And I haven't had that many issues with it. Yes, um, you can't crop as severely as you could higher megapixels. I'm not saying that it doesn't have any effect to it, but it's so much more important with everything else in this camera for getting sharp shots and getting the autofocus. And I don't know, it just like seems like it's so much better quality out of the sensor that. I'm not saying if you crop severely down you're going to see that resolution loss, you will, but you shouldn't need to crop that much and it's nothing that you really need to worry about. Like it's not going to bother anybody. I, like I promise you it hasn't bothered me at all and I was worried about it when I got this camera. So like I said to just conclude everything up here, if you have the RP and you're think if you have the RP and you're thinking about upgrading to the R6, I definitely definitely say go for it if, you know, the budget's there for you because your the autofocus system way better. In body stabilization works really great. Overheating not that big of an issue. Um megapixel um resolution loss not that big of an issue. Everything about this camera is really impressive, really amazing double card slots, all that, whatever. I don't really care about that that much. Um, one, one other thing I will say before I finish this video is that the battery life is way better than the RP. So there's another thing that you don't have to worry about. The joystick is cool. I don't use it that much. Um, people seem to really love it. I don't even mind using the touch screen for that kind of thing. But again, if you guys think this video helped you, please go below, subscribe, click that notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next video.